Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? I hope you're good, I'm great. Things are still messy, but it's only been like 10 minutes since I finished the last vlog. That's not true, maybe like an hour. So I'm just picking up where I left off and cooling off a little bit. I've cleaned up this whole area, got that areca palm. Let me get it, I'll show you, hold on. Areca palm's been moved over and then I finally got this area leveled out for the grill. The grill's nice and level now. The birds pooped right on it. That's what the birds do. Areca palms here. I have planters and things I need to handle. The I need to repot this Australian tree fern. And on that note, Fern Fridays. Coming back, I'm going to do a few different videos. What I've decided on doing with Fern Fridays is, um, pardon the impatience. Things get really toasty. They'll be okay. I'm giving, they just had a big soak. But, um, what was it? Fern Friday. Fern Friday was a thing I did last winter into early spring. And I just kind of got to a point where I was like, I didn't feel like buying any more ferns. Like, I don't want that many ferns. So I cut it off and I tried to find a solution that, because I enjoyed doing Fern Friday, but, you know, 52 weeks in a year, it's just not practical. So what I decided on doing, spider web over here in my face, what I decided to do is each season, so winter, spring, summer, fall, to do a series. So like four to six videos and like, you know, that way there's four seasons in a year and have four seasons a year of Fern Friday. How's that sound? Hope good, because that's what I'm doing. So that's going to be coming back here. Uh, actually, the first one should have been out right before this video. If not, then that just means I waited to film and get some more things done and that'll be out next week. But it's starting the month of July, like I said, four to six videos and comment down below with any ideas you have. I already have the ferns picked out for three to four of the videos. I wanna do one video on fern anatomy and uh, the other one I want you guys to pick. I have to be able to find the fern and need to be able to obtain it. It needs to be a reasonable price too. You know, YouTube, it doesn't, doesn't pay that well. So I like to think to kind of somewhat break even. So that's not practical. That would have to be like a $4 fern, but you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not gonna be going out and getting like a $100 fern or anything like that. But leave your comments down below for suggestions with Fern Friday. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad I got that out of the way. I was really worried I was going to forget to address that because in that Fern video, which may or not, be out by now, may or may not be out by now, I said that I would talk about uh, Fern Friday in the beginning of this vlog. So that's what that's about. This one just had a really heavy soaking. I've been going through adjusting my drippers. I think I'm going to need more on this pot, probably three of them, and I need to do the same down there, which means I'm going to have to go to the store eventually at some point in this video and get some drip stuff and work on that finally able to get this area cleaned up. I have a couple plants left to repot over here. I'm gonna shovel all that excess out and put it over there into my dump garden. Oh, I need to handle these urns too. These urns are broken and uh, I just can't do anything with them. The bottoms of them, too big. So whatever I put in there roots down in there and it's impossible, impossible to get the plants back out when it's time to repot them. And I hate to get rid of them, but just like you can see how they've broken over the years from um, me trying to get the old plants out of them. It's not practical, so I need to try and get that soil out so I can get rid of these or just figure something else out with them. Once I'm done with that, though, I'm going to be done with my pot cleaning. I've been clearancing out, clearancing out. What's the word? Uh, liquid, not liquid. What's that, you know? Consolidating. I've been working on consolidating my pottery, getting things dumped out and cleaned up. This is maybe like a fifth of what I have. I still need to plant up all my seashells and clams and everything, my aquatic planters and whatnot, but it's major, major progress here. I wish I had a shed. Can't have sheds in my neighborhood. The HOA won't allow it. And I don't really think I have anywhere to put one anyways, but that's what's going on there over here. This is, you know what's not smart? Putting plants on top of something shiny and reflective. That was dumb. Yeah, I had just scooted these out of the way so that I could get this areca palm over here. But for right now, those will go right there because this whole area, I need to re-rig the drip. There's only like two emitters over here. And I'd like to just run something individual to each one, assuming the water pressure will hold up. I think if I, instead of using the adjustable drips and using the ones that do like a quarter to a half to a gallon a day, you know, or per hour a day, I don't, you know what I'm talking about, the little drip emitters. That might help with the pressure. I don't know. Okay, I don't know where I left off. I just got interrupted by a telemarketer. The, those are the updates. And now I can 
get to work. I want to get things potted up over here, get things planted up, get the whole area cleaned up. I have to pull this hot tub out because the control panel's broken. So it's drained and that's, uh, that's not going to be fun. I don't think I'm going to vlog that. It's going to be an absolute nightmare pulling this thing out because the access panel to all the electrical is on the other side of this wall. But it had to go in this direction in order to have the steps to get into the hot tub. Otherwise, like, it'd be kind of dangerous. So, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about if I'm not going to vlog it. We'll see. <coughs> Can I help you? Can I help you? What is going on? What do you want from me? What do you want? I said, where's your ball? What's going on? Go get your ball. Go get your ball. Go get your ball. Don't harass me. Go find your toy. Tucker, where's your toy? Go get your toy. I don't know where it is. Yeah, what's wrong with him, Toby? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Tucker. I have things to do. I have things to do. Oh my goodness. You crazy. You got a big old nasty eye booger, Tucker. Okay, he found his ball. I'm working on aquatic planters. I don't know how I feel about the performance from Miracle Grow Soil for that, but I went ahead and potted one up last night and it works okay. I think that there's one, the Nature's Organic, the one, the Green Bag, may have been a slightly better choice. I don't know. But this is, it seems like it's going to compact and mud up heavily. So I'm blending it with sand. But that's all really neither here nor there. Oh, and the only gravel I have is, I have tons of this rainbow gravel here. This is from a very, very old fish tank that I broke down. I mean, I think I was probably a kid or a teenager. I don't remember. But either way, I have tons of this gravel. This is just like what I brought out. There's more, and that's what I'm using in the aquatic planters, which is a little dumb, but it's what I have. Why go buy more of something when I have this to use? So yeah, so far I've only got that cattail planted up. And it doesn't matter because eventually we won't even be able to see that. I just like to top dress those pots so that the uh, when it rains heavily, it's not gonna splatter. But I need a creeping Jenny. I was going to pull some up from my garden. Let me show you. Was that a fun view of the ground? Sorry about that. And it's starting to rain, which means maybe I'm not going to do an aquatic plant because I was going to film it. Anyways, I was going to pull up um, Creeping Jenny. I have so much of it, but I've sprayed over here for the mosquitoes. The mosquitoes have just been absolutely out of control lately. I'm going to just start doing a vlog where I weed. How about that? That'll get me to do it. Sometimes, you know, something can be right in front of you and just don't see it. Anyways, I'm concerned about there being mosquito spray on there. I don't want that in the water, so I'm going to run to the store and see if there's any there. Someone has told me to check out Walmart because I guess they have, like, a lot of great stuff out on clearance right now. I don't know if my store will, but I'll try Walmart first. It's time to give up on that ball bud. Starting to rain. Starting to rain. Sorry, Tuck. we got to go to Walmart. Let's go Walmart, Tuck. Oh, I wish I could take him with me. It would make Walmart so much more enjoyable. I'm here. My car is making like a weird hissing sound. Can you hear it? Probably not. Also, I'm pretty sure I need to get my shocks replaced. Maybe there's a spring broken because it was a very bouncy, bumpy ride down here. And I'm slightly car sick. I was bopping and just like bouncing all over the place. And what's even worse was that I actually brought water with me so that I wouldn't go to Starbucks. Do they not have normal carts? I have other things I need. What am I gonna, what's it? That's rude. But my dang car was so bouncy I couldn't drink anything. It was just like splattering all over me. Hey, that's cool. What's going on over here? Tanks aren't looking too great, are they? I've heard they're getting rid of their fish. Is that true? Let's hope so this. <laughs> that is not a dwarf hamster. That is not a gerbil. None of these things should be in here. It's way too small. Come on. It would be really nice if pet stores would start selling things suitable for the animals that they actually have pictures on the box of. Cart. Where's my cart? I need a... Oh. Those are cute. Very summery. Okay, this... Now that's a winner. Oh, that does not feel good at all. Don't like the way that feels in my fingers. Not that I wasn't going to get it anyways, but it felt scratchy. Ooh. Hey, this might make for nice little, like, herb planters, maybe? Look, something small. Hmm. I wanted to grab one of those, the, like, Arctic mugs that are supposed to be comparable to a Yeti. I have my Yeti. I lost one of them. I think someone took it. 
So I thought I'd grab one and see how they compare. Not, oh, you know what? Camping. I bet it's in the camping section. Oh, man, I wish they had had things like this when I was a kid. They have a cactus one and a flamingo one at Walgreens that I love. It is amazing how quickly I get distracted by anything that's shiny and rainbowy. Those are cool. What do you do with that? Iridescent sunflower vase. That's what the label says. Can I... Can I get this? No, that's ridiculous. There's no use for that. These, though, even better for herbs. I mean, you want to put a hole in the bottom, put a plastic liner in there. Maybe you can use the little chalk, write down what you got in there. Be kind of cute. This it all depends on your aesthetic. Look at that teeny tiny little bitty Instagram type pot. I actually walked away from this and came back, so I was like, man, that's stupid. And then I thought, I was like, no, that'd be really cool sitting on someone's desk. Put like a teeny tiny little ficus in it, or cactus are probably more appropriate. That's kind of cool. And they remind me of the turrets from Portal. Anybody play that game? PS3? Do you know what I'm talking about? No, still no cart. I haven't found one, so that's alright. I'll just carry what I need. These guys. Oh, it's only $8? <laughs> it was all, oh, I want the white one, but it's all the way up there. That It's literally right next to the silver one. It's a stainless. Kind of like this one a little bit better, actually. The question is, will a venti from Starbucks fit in the seamlessly just like it does in the Yeti? I'm thinking, probably, I keep trying to hide my thumb because I was just gardening, and so there's a little bit of dirt under my nail, and I'm embarrassed by it. I'm so sorry. Okay, I have been trying to remember to buy fishing line for, like, literally, like, four years. It's just one of those things I can never remember to grab. Since I'm over here, I don't know what any of these things mean. I know what the yards are. The pound, though, like, that's... I guess that means the strength. Yeah, that's how strong it is. It doesn't really matter because I'm using it for crafting and gardening type things, so that, that, that's no big deal. Um, okay, probably not necessary, but man, be fun. That's not what it's for, though. Do y'all know anything about the read uh, charge in your uh, refrigerant? Okay, my hands are about to become full, so we'll get back into things when I have a cart. <laughs> Be right back. Hey, this stuff's kind of fun though. Look, they got a whole entire thing with crocodiles with fake succulents in them. That's neat. <laughs> that was fun. I walked out the door with all the stuff in my arms, grabbed a cart, and the cashier looked at me like, where are you going? It's like, I need a cart, dude. Chill. But he was looking at me like I was trying to steal stuff, which I wasn't. Hey, when I was here last time, the oleanders were not in bloom. And it was bugging me, because I was like, how are you supposed to know which one you want if they're not going to label the color, and they're not in bloom? That didn't make any sense. So, pink. That's what it turns out those are. Pretty hibiscus. Whenever I see these double orange hibiscus, I'm just all about those Aloha orange ones that I saw down in Florida. I wish someone would sell those up here. These are similar, but the thing I really liked about those is they had a dark, dark foliage, when the foliage was also like really stiff. They're beautiful plants. Like not just the flowers, the whole plant was really pretty. Now this double red one back here, the foliage is darker. I mean, that could also just be like light and whatnot. It may have absolutely nothing to do with the variety. Lots and lots and lots of hibiscus trees. Oh my gosh, I have the whole department to myself. I don't have to whisper, that never happens. Uh, still have those. Oh, no I don't there's someone over there. That's all right. Screw it. I'm here having a good time. Clearance veggies. It's not too late to get your tomatoes going. If you pick something up that's already started, kind of big, that'll work out. Oh, that is a big, beautiful hibiscus flower. No variety names. It's one of those tropical paradise escape ones. Really nice looking though. Pretty flower. Any other fancy hibiscus over here? Oh, that one's kind of cool. It's a double flowered, lighter pink one. This is kind of a cool caladium. I'm working on a caladium video right now. It should be out by the time this came out. It would have been useful with that footage when I was trying to show different varieties. But if it doesn't have a label on what the variety is, I guess that, that doesn't really matter. Hey, succulents, how you doing? We've got kind of some neat little plants over here. Nothing like mind-blowing. Aloes and echeverias, sedums, a whole bunch of things. But, yeah, I need them with a label. I like to know what the actual variety is. 
They have lots and lots of vinca. You know, I love vinca, but I am extremely particular about the flowers. I like the ones that are like a lighter pink with a dark metal, which is weird because with hibiscus, if they have a dark metal, I don't like them. I mean, I like all of the vincas, and I like all the hibiscus too. I should say I don't like it. That's a bit much. Are these on? They're on clearance, but not enough on clearance. Still nine dollars. Um, excuse you. Whole bunch of hanging baskets full of begonias, and is this whole thing clearance? It's kind of hard to believe. The lilac over here for eight bucks. Ooh. Yeah, that's not too bad for this agave, though. That's a decent price. Four bucks. It doesn't really look very bad either. But I just, I like to know what type it is. And I don't really need more agaves. I have plenty of them as it is, so that, I guess that would be a waste of money. But it's cute. I like it. Oh, they tried. You know, I think that a lot of the plants that aren't looking too great, I mean... Partially that just sort of happens sometimes, places, you know, big box stores. But it also, I've mentioned, it was a really, really cool June. Well, it wasn't cool, but it rained a lot, so the sun wasn't super strong because it was always raining. And then uh, July hit, and it was like, hey, it's going to be crazy hot now, and not anywhere near as much rain, so it's kind of a shock to the plants. Are these things on clearance? Not that I would buy it, just wondering. These are those planters that they had, I think they were like $100 or something. And I was like, it's a plastic pot with geraniums and a robolini in it. They should never, no reason it should cost that much. This one has a euphorbia in it. No idea, it doesn't matter, I'm not getting it anyways. Is there a lot of shadow in there? Probably, no, the shadow's down there. Down there, hey, the things just got confusing. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. I didn't know Bay was here. That's a sign. I have to go to Starbucks. I haven't been there in forever. I can go and get a coffee. It's alright. Nothing wrong with that. Especially since I was just yawning for absolutely no reason. I mean, I guess I'm tired. That would be a reason for yawning. Okay, this one. $44. $44.44. I mean, no. That's still too much, but I mean, if maybe these are plants that are hard to come by uh, for certain people, you know, different regions have access to different things. So, in which case, that would be not a bad deal. But, I mean, you can pick up a Robolini usually where I live at Lowe's for like 14 bucks, get a hanging basket with some geraniums in it for like eight dollars somewhere, they're on sale all the time, and just get a cheap, cheap pot. Also, there are other people out here, and I have officially just stopped caring. I'm vlogging around other people and not whispering. That doesn't happen often. Okay, these are kind of cute. I like this. I enjoy the lavender and the whitewashed urn aesthetic. That looks nice. It's, however, <laughs> very, very plasticky. Oh, they have little tiny barrels, too. That's kind of cool. And they have some that are in these purple pots. I don't hate that purple pot. That's kind of cute. Okay, did y'all just enjoy that bee break? They're all over the place. Loving those blanket flowers. Some cone flowers. White cone flowers. These are... They don't actually look that bad. Not that bad assorted succulents down here. Should keep the camera on what I'm talking about. Got some fox lilies. Looks like there is some, uh, whatchamacallit over there. The Russian sage. Nice, sturdy, drought-tolerant plants. Lots of lavender. Tons and tons of lavender. Okay, you go check out the other side. Ooh, not as much out here as there was before. Clarence succulents and caladiums. These are actually, that's a really pretty caladium. Don't know what kind it is, but it's pretty. Tons of ferns. Only 276 for some Mark Wahlbergs up there. Those are the Boston ferns. Hmm. Well, 
10 bucks for a holly. It doesn't look terrible. It just needs to be staked up. Mm, no, I wouldn't buy that. Never mind. Seriously, though, so many ferns. 276. If I needed some, I'd be loading up on them. And uh, that's it for houseplants. Walmart, they haven't had much as far as houseplants go this year. Haven't seen a ton. I guess that's everything. Oh, that's a pretty good price here for this Nandina, for this heavenly bamboo. Because it's nice and big. It's a big one. It doesn't look great, but $9? Not too bad. Yeah, I'm gonna go. No plants. I feel weird checking out in the garden apartment without any plants. And they've got some pre-filled bird feeders over here. Haven't seen that before. Looks like they have a little perch on here that pulls out from down below. I mean, I guess that's cool. I assume the no waste part is that they have not much food comes out, so they can't throw it all over the place. I guess as long as you refill it, then it's not that wasteful. Five bucks isn't bad. Maybe you just want something like quick and easy. Hey, hey. Uh, these are nice looking hanging baskets, aren't they? Especially for five dollars. I mean, they look that looks. In person, that looks real cheap. I mean, it is. But these, not so much. I don't hate these. These are kind of cool looking. It could also just be the Walmart lighting. Because it does have a texture to it, so it's not just like it's speckle painted. That's actually not so bad. Uh, I am currently in the process of getting rid of pots because I have too many, so no. And I don't have anywhere to hang any hanging baskets. But that looks cool. I was thinking it's shallow enough that these would look neat with some succulents in them. Like not even as a hanging basket, just it's a bunch of succulents. That'd look kind of cool. Does anyone know, I'm not gonna be able to zoom in well enough, that car that the cars keep driving in front of? I can't see it. Is that a, that's not a Lexus. It's very, very pretty, whatever it is. Okay, Gaga, you gotta shut up. I'm not getting demonetized over you. It's a pretty car. I just, I can't see what the emblem is on there. I mean, it, that, it's not a, what is that? Where are you going? Your car's pretty. I'm at Starbucks. The caffeine's just necessary today. And I know I'm always like, hey, I'm cutting back on the coffee and stuff, and then I'm at Starbucks every week, but that's, it's once a week. So what y'all don't know is that I was going, well, I'm not gonna tell you how often. I'm just gonna say I was going way more than once a week. I like what they've done with the coleus here. Looks cool. Little ketchup and mustardy, but still looks neat. Down there, that's gonna be really hard to see. Very grainy and shaky probably, but with the begonias and they put the Ensep Morelli's, the red obsidian bananas in the middle. That looks really neat too, especially if the smaller coleus in the front were to fill out that lime green. Oh, that would just be gorgeous. I really, I'm really ready for my coffee now. <laughs> clouds. That's enough. That would have been better if there were some neat clouds in the sky. I love me some Bobby or B.O.B. Bobby Ray's back in the day. Yeah, see how the Starbucks fits in there so well? It's perfect. I check with the other one, but it's it's in the trunk. I'll get to that in a minute. Hold on. That looks the same to me. So I would imagine that'll fit in there just the same. Yep. It actually fits a little bit better because the lid from the cup kind of fits around the top there. See how melty this is when I get back. Have a look at it now. It's hot outside, so I, we'll see. Oh, and the lid fits on this just perfectly from the Ozark one onto the Yeti. That alone, sorry, airplane. That alone, like, because that entire thermos, the other one was like $8. So I think the Yeti lids are probably that much. So if that stays cool, I'll be into that. I'm at Home Depot. Let's get some creeping... Jenny, and does this say bad wheel on it this time? No, okay. Yeah, in that last video, people were really having fun making fun of me with my bad cart that said bad wheel on it. I know that the cart said bad wheel. I was well aware, but it was the only one I could find. It was really annoying. I'm really just really into purple this year. That is so pretty. Wow, they've stepped it up with their fans. Lots of fans. I don't hate it. It's not the worst idea ever. It seems to be working. Holy flippin' 
succulents. I feel like such a cheese ball. I mean, don't just curse, but you know, it's YouTube, so I don't know who's in the room. There might be children, so I'd try and not use bed language as much as possible. I really, I don't think I do at all. I've gotten a lot better about that. Years ago, not so much. These are really pretty and somewhat more appropriate. I don't understand the ones over here that have the set crush up in the middle or the core of items just because these are, they're not centerpiece plants. They're trailers. They're just going to spread all over everything. Like that's a terrible idea. But here's the thing, if these go on clearance, which it looks like they're, they're 1998 as it is, that's not a bad deal if they have enough stuff in them that you can pull them apart and use them for something else, or just pull the centerpiece out and do something else with it. But these are, like, really, it's a lot of stuff in there for 20 bucks. I already have a couple of these that I picked up on clearance from another Home Depot. I'm going to be pulling those apart and use them to fill up my clam. But otherwise, I mean... I don't know what y'all been doing. That, well, that's a little. I mean, you could have tried a little bit harder than that. Just one little, one little leaf. Come on now. Oh well, I guess they tried. Well, not really, actually. No, that's the definition of not trying, isn't it? I'm going to browse the tropicals because I was just talking about that orange. Every time I'm at a Lowe's or Home Depot, I'm looking for that orange hibiscus, but I don't... I don't think this is the right time to go digging through the hibiscus because they got sprinkler cart doing its thing over here. I think these guys are why I keep calling that other one a Hawaiian punch when that's not. It's like Aloha Hawaiian orange. But they always have these Hawaiian punch hibiscus out every year and that's probably why I was confusing them. Hey, we've got some nice big hydrangeas over here. Some paniculatas. Vanilla strawberry. That's my fave. Bay. Proven Winners has one that's very similar. I haven't seen it for sale before, but I've seen pictures of it, and it's stunning. Sorry my autofocus is a little bit behind today. It's just, you know, like I've been saying in the last few vlogs, time for a new camera. Just waiting for the camera to be released so I can buy it. But yeah, Vanilla Strawberry. Fantastic. Super hardy. I have some of mine in pots, and I'm in zone 6. They overwinter wonderfully every single year. They take lots and lots of sun, lots and lots of heat, and these flowers, they age out beautifully. They start off white, as you can see here, and then they'll start to get a pink, come on, and then they'll start to get a pink tinge to the outsides of those flowers, and then eventually they'll be pink down low, and it'll be a lighter pink as it fades up top. They're just beautiful. The blooms on them get pretty big and pretty heavy, so you gotta sometimes stake them up, make sure they're pruned properly in the springtime, but fantastic. I love the vanilla strawberry hydrangeas. I actually think I may have done a video on those before. I'm not sure. If not, then I just kind of filled you in in a nutshell with those guys. Some hardier hibiscus over here. The Apparently we're calling the Pretoria Kianas, Tropicana Golds now. Is there a difference? I mean, maybe there's a difference. Just looks like a Pretoria to me though. Whew, shade. Shade feels nice. It's only like 81 degrees, but man, humid. And you know, the thing is with all the hibiscus at places like this, they tend to not be labeled. These are just assorted hibiscus. If they don't have flowers on them, can't make any assumptions. These Manda villas are gigantic. They're so big and full and $60. I mean, when they're that big, I guess that, that's not terrible. In the spring when they came in and they were nowhere near that big, I was like, that seems like a bit much. That's not too bad. A lot of places don't even have them anymore because where I live, at least, they're <laughs> already starting to clearance plants out to make room for the mums and everything. It's just the nature of the beast, I guess. I'm not thrilled about it. I'm going to walk in front of my cart. Hopefully that'll help with the noise a little bit. But I mean, it makes sense. You, you spend like a month clearing things out, making room for the false stuff. It's what you gotta do. You have to maintain your inventory properly, but like summer just started. So that kind of stinks. Creeping Jenny, where's the Creeping Jenny? Uh, no. No Creeping Jenny. Can have a glance at the houseplants though. Bromeliads, 
Spathophyllums, Cordolin, some Ficus elasticas, and then all the little guys. I could do a Pothos over the front of the pot instead of a Creeping Jenny, but I think a Creeping Jenny would look a lot better. And the last thing I need is more Pothos, so probably won't do that. This is nothing new. They have always sold these, but for some reason today, I'm really enjoying them. How stinking cute. And I like the variegated ones too. This is a Galaxy False Aurelius, what they're calling it. And then this variegated one is Gold Crest False Aurelia. Cute. Begonias, Fetonias, Sansevierias. I'm having like flashbacks to all the plant videos last winter. Winter time, I'm indoors doing a lot more houseplant type videos. This is, you're very pretty. Pearls and Jade. Are you pearls and jade, Pothos? Is it? Those leaves are kind of broad to be a marble queen. It's a little small to tell if it would be a manjula, but manjula usually has um, chunkier variegation. I thought pearls and jade was like a more striped. Kind of like this, like more striping in it. So I guess that's probably just variation because that one's just a little bit smaller. That's probably all that is. It's pretty. I don't like those leaves, but I like those. Oh, a bunch of bird's nest ferns. I want a crocodile fern. They're so cool looking. I think I like them so much because they remind me of the uh, java fern. Another microsorum, but it's an aquatic java fern, or an aquatic fern, an aquatic plant. And the crocodile fern has a similar shape. So do these. But the Microsorm, they have heavy veinings in them. It's what reminds me of the Java Fern. Java Fern's one of my favorite plants for the fish tank just because they're somewhat vigorous, but they're just sturdy. Very tough, tough aquatic plants. And uh, I like the way the crocodile ferns look. So there's the end of that story. Hey, it's got a Hoya over here. There's a lot of gnats flying around it. Still cute though, some ferns and other things, just not, I've talked before in the last vlog, I'm like, Home Depot's where I live, the tropical selection just hasn't been great this year. In the winter time it was okay. You're cute. Oh, its name is Beautiful Home Decor, which you can't even tell because the camera won't focus. Probably another one of those pearls and jades. When I see the stripes in them, on the foliage, then it makes more sense. That other one probably just, the leaves were smaller, not as developed. I like this philodendron. This is a decent looking plant compared to a lot of the other ones around here that I'm seeing. A little bit healthier looking, nice looking leaves. The pot felt firm, like it was nice and full. Okay, so there used to be a product, it was called like Safe Garden, something like that, that they sold here. It was like, Peppermint oil, essentially. It smelled like peppermint oil when you sprayed it. And it was fantastic for the mosquitoes and spiders. With the pool and all the gravel and everything that I have in the area, the spiders get really, really out of control. And that stuff worked fantastic and it was safe to use and they stopped selling it. But this cutter one right here, it says on the ingredients label that it has the peppermint oil in it. And a bunch of other stuff so i might just like give it a try and see how i like it see how it works this peppermint oil works great for spiders and, and helps with really any insect it comes in contact with hmm man the mosquitoes are just so bad this year yeah i don't see it in here anymore it um it's not that hard to make your own solution with a sprayer use some peppermint oil so peppermint oil gets expensive so and I very much enjoy the convenience of just being able to put this on the end of my hose. Now, one thing else about Home Depot is their nice pots are pretty darn nice. Pricey. For what they are, I guess the price really isn't so bad. But, like, these are, this is a really big pot right here. That's a nice size pot. $100, bet much. They had one that was online that was absolutely beautiful, and I couldn't find it in the stores. It was an urn planter. Sorry for pointing the camera at the ground. I was looking at things with my eyes and not through the camera. It was an urn, but it had lots of the, um, like, acanthus style to it. It's really beautiful. But yeah, I never saw it in the stores, which was unfortunate, because it was really pretty. It went on clearance online. 
but uh, it, I didn't see it. I wasn't able to figure out if I could have it delivered or not. So, that's another story that didn't really go anywhere. Okay, I'm going to poke around a little bit more, see if I can find a Creeping Jenny. If not, then I'll just move on with life without it. I don't feel like running around to a bunch of different nurseries today. Eh, it's not looking great. Someone left me a comment saying, maybe I misunderstood the comment. I thought they were saying that they had discontinued these. Maybe they just discontinued the one they preferred. But if you, they have, they have those at Home Depot, if that's what you're looking for. Um, the, I use just like a universal hose and feeder. Works just fine. Yeah, nah, I did another round. No creeping Jenny. Oh well. The coffee. Looks good. Still frozen. That's pretty much what I would expect from the Yeti. It's not exactly an experiment since I only got the one coffee, but you know. You get the point seems to work just fine it's hot it's very toasty in here so worked out well time to go home are the mimosa trees blooming for you guys they're in full swing here some have those like peachy flowers on them some of them are like a hot hot pink i of course prefer the hot pink ones the mimosa in my backyard has the peach colored flowers i've never seen them for sale listed with the different flower colors so the one I have, actually the one I have is one of the few that I've ever even seen for sale. Because they're not really a nuisance here. Sorry, is my air too loud? It's hot. Very hot. Um, yeah, they're not really a nuisance here, but they can be. Like, they will pop up in uh, rocky areas, like along the sides of the highways where, like, cliff sides and things are. They'll show up pretty warm and toasty during the winter time. but I've never had any volunteers in my yard before. Are you guys... Can you see how bumpy it is in here? I'm bouncing all over the place. Not a lot of those rocky, cliffy areas over here, but if I see some more, I will show them to you. I did decide I am going to swing by a nursery that I don't coo to, coo to, I don't go to very often, because it's kind of far away. It's not really far away, it's just feels like it's far away, because you kind of got to get there off of these back roads. I... I'm going to get car sick. So I'm gonna check back with y'all when I get to the nursery. I have the hardest time in this big car going 55 on these tiny little roads. And my old car, that red BMW's in the driveway, no problem, I'd be zipping right through here. But in this one, it just, it feels like I'm going so much faster. It feels dangerous. I know I said I was gonna go, but well, I had other random, not important things to say. Ah, 50. That's a little bit better. And I'm trying to keep my eyes peeled for some mimosas, since that's what we were talking about. So, see if any of those show up here. Oh, I just passed the most beautiful magnolia tree, and I couldn't show it to you guys because I sneezed. My bad. Oh my gosh. That was ridiculous. Buy me dinner first. Holy freaking crap. I need to get that fixed. Was that cursing? I hope not. I'm sorry if it was. I'm here. Oh, it's so pretty. This nursery, it's called Pisiglia's here in St. Louis. I don't go here often, just gonna be completely honest, because they are very expensive. It's a very pricey nursery. I really like um, Greenscape, which I vlogged a teeny tiny bit there before. I don't, uh, I, I never, I like to ask for permission at family-owned places to vlog. I probably won't today. But um, that's why I haven't really vlogged at Greenscape, because I just have never been able to come across the owner at the right time to ask. But this place, they got lots of nice looking stuff. That's a really beautiful Rose of Sharon. And a great big pot. Wow, gorgeous plants. Maybe I should poke around a little bit for some ideas of things to uh, put in that, what's going to be a bald spot in my yard today. That stump's getting ground out where my Japanese maple died. I could look a little bit, maybe. I don't know, I don't really feel like it. Just kind of look at my Creeping Jenny and go home. Oh, that's a pretty Barbary. This is the Orange Rocket Barbary. Barberies are fantastic for bird gardens. They have some thorns in them, and they, when they start to get taller, they have a nice little shelter area under them for the birds to hide out, provide some protection. I don't particularly care for all of the thorns, but nobody does. I have magnolias on my mind. I can't put a magnolia in that spot. It's just going to get too big, but I'm just curious. This is the Bracken's Brown from Monrovia. 300 bucks. That's kind of a Monrovia situation, though. I can't really put that totally on the nursery. I like this one. Oh, that's cute. 
Is this another Bracken's Brown? They don't typically <laughs> have the little trunks on them. It is so incredibly sunny, I cannot see my screen at all. It's at maximum brightness, so fingers crossed you guys can see what's in front of me. Because even the Bracken's Brown Beauty Magnolias, they still get like 30 to 50 feet. Now it takes them a very long time, but I don't want anything that's going to get over 10 feet in front of the house. It's going to block the house too much. Crepe Myrtle might be an option. This is a Tonto. They tend to be... That was a very farty sounding muffler on that car. The Tontos. Really beautiful flowers on these. They tend to be pretty cold hardy. But, I don't know, crepe myrtles are always a risk here in my zone. They'll survive at the roots, pretty much always. Then they'll come back like a butterfly bush. But I want the wood to survive, because I want the tree form. So that's probably not a smart direction to go, even though that would probably be my first choice if it were a real option, if things would stay warm enough. And you can protect them, you can put things around them, wrap them up and what not until the wood starts to thicken out. With crepe myrtles, it seems to be the freezing and thawing temperatures that does them in. Their wood just is nowhere near as hardy as their roots. I'm really, really being pulled into these. These are absolutely beautiful. Very nice shapes. And that I can see was not in focus, I'm sorry. But when it comes to my front yard, I don't like to do things that require tons of winter protection because it just it doesn't look that great having leaf piles and things wrapped around your plants in the front yard. What kind of hydrangea are you? Oh, this is Bobo? My Bobo hydrangea doesn't, doesn't look anything like this. I mean, it probably would. <laughs> I haven't planted it. It's still in its pot from last year. Look at how thick and full this bamboo is. Beautiful. That is gorgeous and really not a terrible price. These are slow to get this big and clump up. So, I mean, it's still, I mean, out of my price range, but pretty. Yeah, I have a feeling I'll end up doing another Japanese maple out there, just not one of the blood goods, because those get way too big. Rose of Sharon Tree might be an option, maybe. Those are some of the tallest standardized hibiscus Syracuses I've seen before. I gotta have the right flowers on them, though. Those can be kind of pruned and manipulated to give a crepe myrtle type effect. You don't really get it with the flowers, but as far as getting that um, vase shape, doable. Not really as a standardized one, though. Wow, that's a really pretty setup. It's not in focus, but it's an umbrella pine. A very large, full umbrella pine. That is a stunning, stunning tree. I mean, that's, oh, it's so pretty. I love those. Yeah, there's a cute little Edenidia palm in here for $162. I guess that's not horrible this far north. Uh, that's pretty pricey for a Chinese fan palm, though. It does have some trunk on it, though. When they start to get trunk on them, the prices go up, so still, though, uh, I don't know. Wow, there are a lot of noisy cars over here. Hey, 12 bucks for this big papyrus. That's not bad. I already have a baby tut, or a prince tut, that I'm going to use, which is a different effect, but I think it'll work. It's more bushy, but I remember last year the papyrus I planted got so big that I ended up pulling it out of the pond, because it was too much. That, oh, this cordolin's got some nice shape to it. The leaves aren't anything special, unfortunately. Otherwise, that'd be a pretty cool house plant, wouldn't it? Why did I say house plant so weird? House plant? That's not how that's said. Okay, so even though it's a perennial, Creeping Jenny's usually with the annuals, which there are not very many of at all. Cute little snow bushes, though. Those are adorable. I might have it somewhere else. I'll look. Ooh, do I need more tight Giants? Not really, but it's tempting. If they were in a larger pot, since it's already July, I uh, don't want them that small. But if they were in a bigger pot, I would be tempted. Nice looking chokeberry here. Oh, little rascal hollies. You guys seen these before? I love these hollies. They keep a cool shape to them. And the foliage, you know, with the holly, they have the serrated edges on the leaves there. Pretty plants. 
Ooh, Dicey's Ferns. These are some of my favorites. Aren't they pretty? Love a Dicey's Fern. Have not been able to get those to come back for me after winters, though. Even when I protected them, they're hardy. Just, I don't, I don't know what that's about. I think the soil maybe is just a little bit too wet for them those winters. These are interesting. What are they? They're cool. Yeah, I wish bamboo wasn't so expensive for something that grows like crazy. Sure costs a lot to buy. And that's partially because when you dig up those rhizomes and you throw them in a pot, you do have to wait a while for them to go ahead and fill those pots out. They don't just take off immediately. They sit in the ground for a while and then they grow like insanity. Oh, these umbrella pines. These are nice hostas too. Uh, what are you? I like the bluey color on them. This says, would you come on camera, why won't you behave? Eola Sapphire. Very pretty. Like the foliage, it's like kind of glossy. Very glossy, actually. I don't know why there'd be creeping Jenny over here, but I'll have a look. Wow, there's more of those clumpers. Jeez, those are humongous. It's beautiful. Oh, they look so pretty. I have wanted to get a couple of these to put into pots in my garden, but I just haven't been able to find them for the right... I'm not going to get two of them for almost 200 bucks a piece, so that's not going to happen. But, yeah, such awesome plants. Great, great texture. And they have lots of pretty things, but not seeing what I'm looking for, unfortunately. Oh, I could buy a hanging basket, but I bet these are probably pretty pricey and um doesn't even look that good I, I don't want to spend much money just for a strand of creeping jenny and japanese beetles are showing up i've been lucky and i don't want to jinx it but really behave haven't had many issues with those the last few years i know a lot of people have like i said i guess i've just gotten lucky but when I do have a problem with them, um, the seven brand spray seems to work really well. And then just the traps. Gosh, it's, <laughs> I'm crazy about these umbrella pines, guys. Ooh, some cool pottery. Nice, elegant. I like the ones with the laid stones in them. These make cool fountains. Uh, I mean, it's real big though. Oh, I love acanthus. Really like acanthus. Those are some of my favorite perennials, actually. No creeping Jenny. So, hey, gave it a shot. Got to look around the nursery. That was fun. Time to go. Those chairs are really sticking cute. Yeah, another day where the weather forecast was just a lie. That's all right. The shade makes a big difference. It's really good for filming videos, too. I have a few updates over here. Cherry tree stump's gone. Finally, I mean, there's still some stump in there. I had professionals over here. So for everybody who's giving me a hard time, even the professionals were like, nah, that's the best we can do without getting in here with a, one of those giant augers to drill it out, which you can't do because they can't get one through here. So even the professionals were like, nope, nope, because the root system of this is really low down because this got mounted up during construction. It's the whole thing. It's gone enough. It's fine. I can plant over here, finally. And yes, there's weeds. I haven't been doing anything over here because I've been waiting for that to happen. It's all right. Don't worry about it. It's my problem. Not yours. It'll be okay. I was going to plant up this entire area over here in this video, but I don't have time. I'm sorry. Something came up that I have to handle and the rain's starting to move in. So uh, next week is going to be a lot of planting, I promise. Going to handle this area and then going to get some things going over here and over here. Maple tree stumps gone. They came out, ground that out so this whole area can get finished up now. I still have to pick out the centerpiece and play with some design ideas and whatnot, but I'm pretty excited. I don't know if that'll be happening next week because the front yard is like more of an investment. I want to think long and hard about what goes out here. I'm just happy to have this done, finally. Isn't that exciting? I'm excited. Also, rain. It's starting to rain. I put my camera inside. I'm pretty much done with pot consolidation. There's not much left to do. So I can start getting this all put away. Yes. And there were two things I wanted to mention real quick. I forgot. I Last year this was a problem too. 
in the garden tours, you know, some people aren't subscribed or maybe it's their first time here and they don't know. This is, I'm in zone six. So when you see the tropicals and things like that, they don't stay out here all year. They go out in my garage in the winter time and I just keep forgetting when I do a garden tour to mention that for people who don't know. No, you can't grow like the, the false Aurelia. There's one down, you're not gonna be able to see it. Things like that that I show in the garden tour, those those all go inside, like the Chinese fan palms and the crotons and stuff like that. Okay, you done, Rain? You done? I think it's done. Oh, that didn't feel good. Last update. Now, I don't, I don't wanna, you can't see that because it's in an upcoming video, but as far as the pond is concerned, I have been meaning to update for a long time about this and just, kept forgetting to do so. But as far as the fish are concerned, there was a power outage back when we were having all of those storms, tons and tons of storms. The backup pump didn't kick in or it didn't run long enough. I got up in the morning, sturgeon died. Several of the koi, well, a few of them died, several of them. I ended up taking them and put them in my friend's pond, which was something that was going to be happening anyways within like a couple weeks of when all this happened because you can't keep koi in a big pond that's, you know, like plastic like this forever. Haven't for a few years and then I know people who have gigantic ponds to keep the koi in. So my plan anyways had been to go ahead and move all my koi out this year. So a lot of them are free now. Some of them died, unfortunately. And I'm not doing koi anymore. That was the plan the whole time. Just little fish, little minnows, tropicals, things like that. Just make things easier to maintain. I am super bummed about the sturgeon. They're probably the first ones to go. They need a lot of oxygen. So it's just, it sucks. But you know, it is what it is. It's been a, a minute since all this happened. So I'm like mostly over it by now. But I thought I should go ahead and address it because people have asked about the fish and I just... It's not like a pleasant thing to talk about when you have animals die. You know what I mean? Especially when it could have been prevented. I should have had multiple backup pumps and or better ones, I suppose. It's just not a, something I've had to deal with before. It's nice enough. Just nowadays you can have backup pumps. You couldn't do that in the past. You have battery operated ones. You had to be by to flip those on. Whereas now you keep them plugged in. When the power goes out, they kick on automatically. But that was another reason I was going to be getting rid of the koi and moving them out to my friend's pond. I keep wanting to say friend's farm, and that's like sounds like what people say when to their children when their dog dies, that they took them to a farm. Not really the case here. Uh, but yeah, they're out in a big pond now. Very, very large pond. Lots of cattails and things and whatnot. So they're happy. Uh, the ones that died, obviously, not so much. It's unfortunate. But moving forward small fish I might go into like fancy goldfish and stuff like that but uh, I don't know I'm gonna think about it for a while and just enjoy my minnows and there's gouramis and different types of danios in here and a couple of angelfish that I pulled out of my big tank they were getting kind of aggressive with my crebenzi cichlids when they were having babies and they're all doing well they don't stay out here all year in fact the downside to doing it this way is the fish got to go back in as soon as temperatures start to drop below like 68 at nighttime, this water is going to start cooling probably. So that's the downside. I'll put some mosquito fish in here. I'd like to get into some natives and stuff like that. So there's still lots of fun stuff to happen in here, but no more koi because like I only know two people who have really big ponds for me to take my fish to when they get too big and those have a capacity too. So not going down that route anymore, but this is still fun. I like this. I enjoy it and the video on this thing will be out uh, hopefully in a few days from this vlog, the rainbow, it, the, I, the, I already explained the rainbow gravel, right? It's just, it's all I have left. And why go by pea gravel when I have something to use there, right? Whew, very humid now. Glad I got that out of the way. I've been meaning, I haven't been avoiding it, just have kept forgetting to bring it up. And now that I'm doing the aquatic planters, it's just a good time to talk about that. This, it, honestly, my ice is still in there. I don't see a difference between this and the Yeti. There are, I'm sure, lots and lots and lots of YouTube videos of part of my dirty hands. I just planted up that aquatic planter. I'm sure there's a lot of videos on YouTube comparing this to a Yeti, um, $8.50 versus 40. Yeah, I'm saying this is a good deal. The Yetis I have, well, Yeti, I have one Yeti, and uh, that I, I got that before there were good knockoffs available. So I like this, it's working well. Which is good. Yeti needed some competition. Their prices are ridiculous. 
Like their coolers, they're cute, especially that blue one that's like almost a Tiffany blue. But my gosh, they're like three, four hundred dollars for a cooler, and they're not even big coolers. That's just dumb. Oh, and I did have let me come around here. I did have someone ask me if uh, the weight of these succulent planters would be too much for the umbrella, and the answer is probably yeah, maybe. I don't really care. The umbrella, I need a new one. It's got holes in it. It's extremely old. And it, I did test it. It goes up and down with it when I need to break, close it down. I have another one that goes on that side, but it had a lot of ants on it. So I was just cleaning that out before I hang it up. So yeah, I'm probably not the best idea. But the spot I was going to put them in turned out wasn't going to work because it was they're going to go on the wall of my front porch, which now gets a lot of sun because that Japanese maple died. So this will work for now until I figure something else out. But you know, thanks for pooping on my rainbow. It's pretty, right? That's It's just pretty. I'm going with it, it's all right. Hey, thanks for hanging out, doing some shopping with me. Didn't find the Creeping Jenny. I did put some Creeping Jenny in that planter. I just pulled it out of a different planter that was in like my no spray zone. I have a whole half my yard that no chemicals like basically ever. I'll do like neem and soap concoctions, oils and things like that, but nothing like the mosquito sprays unless it's an all natural one. So that'll work out just fine. That video will be out. I don't need to explain that. Oh my gosh, it's so sticky. I gotta go. I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. My social media is down below in the description. You can follow me there. And updates on plants and things that are going on throughout the week and throughout life. I'm on Instagram way more than anything else. Oh, also, one of my timers broke for my drip, so I've been having to hand water an awful lot. What is this life of hand watering? It's terrible. Yeah, I know. Champagne problems, right? Oh, someone asked me how I get my water blue in the pool. I don't. It's clear. That's just, it's a, it's a blue liner, so it looks blue, but it's, it's, the water's clear. If you could leave the video a thumbs up, I appreciate it. Makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel. So thank you for that. And subscribe as well. Upload multiple times a week. So hit that notification bell. That way you know new videos come out. Alright. But as always. And most importantly everybody. Keep on growing. Bye.